You know, it is really hard in general to find the roots of a polynomial or the zeros of a polynomial function, namely where the graph of a polynomial function crosses the x-axis. In general, really hard to do, and in general, by the way, there's no one set algorithm or procedure to do that. A lot of things that we've been thinking about together have been different special ways of doing it in special cases and, and saying some things about those zeros, but in general, really, really hard math question that no one really knows how to answer completely. Kind of cool that, that we don't know how to do it yet. But there are ways of saying some things, and I want to share with you a really cool way where you can, in some sense, in a very special circumstances, kind of lasso a, a range of values where you know that the zeros have to reside within. And you can think of this as a, an upper and a lower bound. And an and upper bound is because, is because it's the bound that is actually greater than, than any particular value that you think of. And then a lower bound would be the, the value that you know that past that there are no zeros. So kind of lassoing those zeros where it's in a cross with an interval is kind of something that sometimes you can do using, of all things, synthetic division. So take a, a particular value, a number like C. And then use synthetic division, or any other way, to long divide x minus c into your polynomial. If it turns out that the answers you get, those coefficients in the synthetic division, are all positive, then that tells you that that value c that you tried is actually going to be greater than all the zeros. Namely, it's going to be a number that's actually going to be to the, the right of all the places where the the function crosses the x-axis. So it's what's called an upper bound. And, and similarly, if you take a, a value c and look at x minus c and long divide it into the polynomial or use synthetic division, what you'll see if the answer you get, those numbers alternate in sign, plus, minus, plus, minus, where zeros can count for either one, it turns out in that case that gives you a lower bound. Really amazing. So you can kind of sandwich in the zeros if you, if you pick accordingly and use synthetic division. Let's take a look at an example so we can see that for ourselves. So the polynomial is f of x equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 16x squared plus 4x plus 48. OK. There we go. So that is the polynomial that I want us to look at. And now what I want us to do is to take a look at some synthetic division. So first, let's just synthetically divide by negative 4. And so this is just a quick thing. You know how synthetic division works. You bring down the 1, you multiply the negative 4 by 1, and we get negative 4, and then you add, and we get negative 5. Then negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. And you add, and you get 4. And 4 times negative 4 is, six, is negative 16. And you add, and you get negative 12. And then negative 4 times negative 12 is 48. And you add, and you get 96. That's the remainder, by the way. Remember, if the remainder is 0, that means that you actually hit a root. So here, we actually see that that's not 0, which means negative 4 is definitely not a root. Definitely not a root. But notice that the signs alternate, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, which means that, in fact, while this is not a root, all the roots or all the zeros of the polynomial associated with this polynomial will be greater than negative 4. Negative 4 is a lower bound for all the zeros or all the roots. That's actually really cool. Just by doing this quick synthetic division, we got that information. Let's now synthetically divide by 5. So 1, 5 times 1 is 5. You add, you get 4. Here you get 20. Add, you get 4. Here you get 20 again. Add, you get 24. 5 times 24, that's 120. And you add, and you get 168. Again, that's the remainder. Notice that that is not 0. So therefore, 5 is not a zero or a root of this polynomial. But notice that all the signs are positive. That means that this number is larger, is larger than all the zeros. So putting these two things together, what we see is that all the zeros of this polynomial, 
or all the places, all the x values where the graph of this polynomial crosses the x-axis, they're all going to reside between the interval minus a 4 to 5, which is really cool. We kind of now have lassoed where those zeros are. We don't know the values. We have no idea what the values are, but we know there are no zeros smaller than negative 4, and we know there are no zeros greater than 5. We do know that for a fact. And just for fun, do you want to see what the graph of that looks like? Oh, by the way, so here it is written formally. They give me a graph, a placard for this, but they don't give me a placard for the function. Go figure. This function uh, has zeros that are between negative 4 and 5. And that's our conclusion, which is absolutely cool. Now, just for fun, do you want to see what the graph looks like? I'll show you what the graph looks like, and let's see if, in fact, it conforms with what we discovered, namely that there are no zeros uh, between negative four, uh, except between negative 4 and 5. Check it out. Look at that. First of all, notice it's a fourth degree, that's the highest power, polynomial. And so it can have at most four roots, one, two, three, four. Has exactly four, that's kind of cool. And notice that the turning points, or the extrema, one, two, three, which is the maximum allowable because it's four minus one, the degree minus one. And check it out. Are there any zeros outside smaller than negative four? No or larger than five? No. All the zeros, or all the places where the curve crosses the x-axis, are indeed between negative four and five. And that's the theorem that we just saw, which is called the upper and lower bounds rule. But it's really cool that just doing two synthetic divisions allows you to quickly see that you can lasso up where all those crossings are going to be, in this case, somewhere between negative four and five. Really cool. So by using this upper and lower bounds rule, what we actually see is something really neat. We see how we can actually lasso the size of the zeros. We know that there's a confined upper and lower bound for them when in fact we use synthetic division and we look for all positive, in which case that's an upper bound, or alternating between plus or minus, in which case we have a lower bound. Really exotic, interesting fact, fun little piece of trivia you could share with your family and friends. I'll see you soon.